Okay, so today is part two of trying to see if we could replace our Evolution Cart pre-CarPlay uh, dashboard display with something from Amazon that will fit right in. So yesterday we ordered two different units. Uh, one was only $47 and the other was $135. So after I pulled it out of the cart, we measured it and we figured that these nine inch Android Auto touchscreen displays, which are rather inexpensive and readily available on Amazon, looked like the identical size. Many of the pinouts were exactly the same. And what I'm gonna do now is boot them up and show you the difference between a little bit of what was advertised and what we got. Because sometimes with these, what they say in the ad and what you actually end up with as far as specifications can be a little bit different. So let's turn them on and I'll show you what these things actually do. And then we'll try to fit one inside. So what I'm doing to turn these on is I have these uh, little 12 volt batteries that are really handy for around the workshop when you're working with automotive grade stuff. And generally what I've wired into the power side is the battery line as well as the accessory. And then the ground line goes to the other side. So battery is where it gets its main battery and the accessory says, yep, my cart is on. So that tells the, uh, the, the display to turn on. I'm gonna plug this pin in and we will boot them both up. Okay, so this first one was the $47 unit. It's hard to believe that you can get anything for $47 that comes with a wiring harness, has a radio, Bluetooth, it has um, satellite uh, GPS navigation on it as well. So quite a few features is going on on this thing. Uh, it'll take a second or two to boot up and you will see what it does. So it looks very similar to the Evolution cart, except when it turns on, you can tell it's running a version of Android. This version of Android has some standard stuff, like you can go to the Play Store and install some things. I've already connected it to Wi-Fi and logged in with a Google account so I could do some things at the Play Store. So one of the first things that I did is I, real, I went and I installed device info and fake device check. These let you see what this is actually running. And so when we go to the CPU, let's go to device info for a second. What we can see is what version of the operating system it's actually running, how many cores it has, and what type of memory is going on. So this will boot up. I'm just gonna go to system. And you can actually see here that this is running Android version nine. So a really early version of Android, it's actually running on here. It's you know five, six, seven, eight years, six, seven years old. So this is a relatively old version of Android uh, on the $45 device. Um, we also had, it's a four core device. Let me go back to the CPU. And it was a four core device with about two gigabytes of RAM. And that is essentially what it was advertised as. So this one in the Amazon ad didn't really say anything as far as the specs go. So that is what it ended up coming with. So for $47, it does run Android. It's an old version of Android. And you can kind of see the car launcher here. It comes with a couple themes. Let me just go to the themes. Uh, this will have Apple CarPlay. So these are some of the themes that you can install right out of the gate. And it has a broad range. So if you do have, um, you know, a, if you're putting this in a car, like a Honda Civic or anything like that, um, there is a lot of automatic configurations for those type of cars. There is not anything for the Evolution Golf Cart. So that is something we will have to figure out later. But overall, yes, it is a Android auto, uh, an Android operating system. It does have Apple CarPlay and you do use CarPlay through this Z-Link 5 piece here. Seems to connect pretty easily uh, and it will connect via Bluetooth so you don't even really need to plug anything in. Now on the back of this thing we have relatively similar uh, interface to what we have on our Evolution car. I bet you the main harness will plug right in. Some of these are the USB, uh, I think the backup camera, and some other things like that. Now, whether or not they will all work kind of like automatically, I'm not fully sure, but I do think this one should bolt pretty much right into our case. 
So this was the first one for only $47. So what are these units running? They are running this thing called the KSW Launcher. And so the KSW Launcher is what is emulating uh, kind of an app that is the default app that makes it look like a car. So when you hit home, you're kind of getting these default views here. Um, inside the settings, if we go into settings, there is this factory section where if you put on both of them at six zeros and hit check, you can get into the settings. There is can related settings inside here. Sorry, let me just go back to the can type settings. And you can check here by running an app update to get the latest CAN bus settings. So CAN bus is a protocol that is in a lot of cars that has different um, messages and information on it. You can read and write to CAN bus that would give you information like climate control and other things like that. So you can see here, there's a lot built in for if we wanted to go to a Ford, you know, an F-150, you could choose different Ford F-150 devices. And then this would set those CAN bus specifications. What we're gonna have to do is try to see if we can find anything that might work with our evolution cart, uh, but we may not be able to. Evolution may have some custom firmware that they kind of flash onto these things. Out of the box, they're more designed to work with cars. Uh, so we will see what we can do. Okay, so I've just taken the screen off and I've opened the case with uh, by taking out the 10 or so silver small Phillips screws on the back. I'm just gonna unplug the connectors and I am going to see what fits in this case. Okay, so this is our factory unit that we took out. Um, it has the lightweight Linux version of the dashboard. This is a non-CarPlay, non-Android unit. And the case that it comes in is this one here. And generally there's these four pins that the board mounts to. And both of these units seem to fit in here without any issue. Uh, they both have the exact same mounting point. They both will fit inside with the lid on top. So this nine inch version is definitely the right exact factory fit if you are looking for uh, a replacement. Even if in the future, you just needed a replacement screen because your touch sensor went wrong, buying this one for $47 you could likely just exchange out the factory board off the back and swap it back into something like this so that your touch sensor and your touch screen work. So if you ever did scratch your screen or break it or crack it, uh, ordering one of these uh, nine inch Android Auto screens from Amazon for $47 does look like it is the exact fit. So both of these do fit in. I'm gonna plug them into the cart and see if they boot up with the factory wiring harness without changing anything else. All right, so on the $165 version, the only clip that fits in is the uh, big main power unit here. These other adapters, I believe they're the USB, the backup camera, uh, and something else, they do not fit into any of these other ports. So on this uh, more modern Android version, the $165 version, it's not as plug and play on the back, but let's lift it up and turn on the cart and see if we do at least get the Android screen to boot up. I hear some really annoying humming and that's it. So it doesn't look like out of the gate, the pins match. So I'm gonna turn that off and that was a bit of a fail. Okay, so now I got the cheaper $47 unit. The main pin fits and those other three uh, pins do all the other three adapters just clip right in. So almost like they have the same structure or design. So fingers crossed on this one, maybe we will have a little bit better luck right out of the gate. Let's turn it on and see what happens. An annoying hum. And just an annoying hum. So similar to the other, no screen power. Um, nothing really. Boot. Okay, so I've checked out a few of the differences between the pins on the uh, stock harness 
versus the pins, uh, expected pins that come on the other one. Generally, I think the only thing that we're missing is the, uh, the Android units are expecting this red wire to be an accessory wire. You can see there beside the ground, uh, which is when the switch is turned on for the car and the bottom one would be the constant battery. In our harness here, it's actually missing. You can see that between the, the uh, black wire and the blue wire on the bottom, there is just nothing there. So we are missing essentially the accessory trigger to uh, turn it on. So I think that might be all we need. A lot of the other wiring does seem to be the same. Like uh, when I put the cart into reverse, I do get the line that would be going to the backup line, uh, which would be trigger the rear view camera and such. So I am thinking that other than that, it does look like a majority of these pins might be right. We're just missing the pin for um, accessory to tell the unit to turn on. So might give it one more try. Okay, so even after adding an extra little pin to activate the display for accessory, it still just makes a ton of howling sounds. It is obviously not wired through the traditional speaker wire. The sound bar is just making an insane kind of high-pitched squealing sound. So I think what I'm gonna end up having to do is to redo a harness from scratch. Uh, it's a bit sad, I was hoping that you would just be able to pull this display out, uh, plug in the pins into the back, and stick it back in and you would have Android Auto, and that is definitely not the case. So more research needs to be done. I will potentially build a new harness and keep on going tomorrow.